Oh man, it's a bit early in the season for all that, isn't it? I feel absolutely <laughs> exhausted, wrecked by that game. 4-2 in the end to Arsenal. And I mean, the scoreline, even then, it probably flatters Leicester based on the balance of the game. And yet this was so nearly a match in which Arsenal dropped two points and drew. Football is a mad sport, isn't it? I mean, we all have a go at analysing it, but sometimes it really can be decided by the finest of margins and big slices of luck. I think both Leicester's goals had a lot of luck about them. Obviously, big deflection of Havertz on the first, and then a worldie. I don't mean to say it was lucky in terms of the technique, but James Justin could try and hit that ball on the volley a hundred times, and I reckon he'd be lucky if he scored it again. Um, and then the goals that Arsenal end up getting, they've got a bit of luck in them too. You know, Leandro Trossard at the back post from a corner, side foots it across goal, and Ndidi um, comes off him and goes into the back of the net. You know, we, we couldn't beat that Leicester goalkeeper. It took one of their own players. And then uh, the fourth goal, Justin slides in and kicks it against Havertz. It ends up in the net. And yet, and yet, for all that, we end up at kind of the right result certainly the right outcome Arsenal winning going level on points with Manchester City at the top of the Premier League Liverpool can go beyond them if they beat Wolves in this evening's game Um, just a crazy crazy finale and yet again the late late show from Arsenal Um, it's not coincidence it's not coincidence and although I speak about luck I don't think there's luck in the way Arsenal won this game the sheer volume of chances they created, the sheer weight of pressure they exerted on the Leicester goal. I think there were, you know, over 15 corners for Arsenal in the game. Uh, Maybe the only surprise is it took quite so long for us to score from one. Hermanson in the Leicester goal had the game of his life and yet conceded four goals. And I think that tells you about the dominance that Arsenal showed. At half-time, it looked like plain sailing. 2-0, Martinelli had a goal and an assist, was pleased for him. I was really impressed with what Ricardo Calafiori was doing at left-back. He looks like um, an outstanding signing, really, really comfortable on the ball. And we were cruising, and I was already thinking, well, we'll get Ranieri on, we'll get Lewis Skelly on. Um, if we can get a 4-0 win, I think we would go above City on goal difference. I was planning for all these eventualities. Leicester had other ideas. Um, the players are just doing the warm down behind me over there, if you can see them. Uh, oh, there they are. So that's the subs doing the warm down now. Uh, the likes of Kivior, Kivior Sterling, Lewis Skelly's out there, Juan Aries out there, just doing their little warm down. They usually finish with a little small sided game as well, out on the pitch. But yeah, Leicester had other ideas, and to be fair, Jamie Vardy was better after half time, completely bossed by. Um, Saliba in the first half but won a free kick for that first goal swung in maybe Havertz dropped a little too deep Justin's header deflected off him and into the back of the net Raya no chance um, had already sort of gone one way and then what a goal from James Justin on the volley oh I mean I was right behind it and listen I'm, I'm as big an Arsenal fan as you'll find but I almost couldn't help but jump up for it it was one of those strikes um and then it just became about Arsenal versus the goalkeeper. It might have been, there was a game years and years ago where Arsenal had to play Vito Manone. I think he was our third choice at the time, but we had an injury crisis in the goalkeeper position. He played, I think it was at Craven Cottage, and he made about 15 saves. I mean, it was absolutely mad. He had the game of his life, and I felt like we were watching this Leicester keeper have the game of his life. In the end, we get the breakthrough. I'm sure it will go down as an own goal. But Trossard just peels away at the back post, a bit like the position Declan Rice was in last season against Manchester United. And he shows real composure. A lot of players would thrash at that. A lot of players would go for the volley, you know, go for the... the, put their foot through it, go for power. He just gently cushioned it back across the goal and thought, let's play the odds, let's roll the dice, let's see what happens here. Ball hits the Leicester player, ends up in the back of the net. Um, And I'm glad we put some sheen on the score with the fourth. I think anything less would have been a bit of a travesty really had Arsenal won this game it would have been absolutely insane given the way that we dominated and I think encouraging signs you know this was a very different challenge Uh, a team playing in a deep block no Martin Odegaard 
But I thought Arsenal had some interesting ways of breaking Leicester down, winning the ball high, turnovers, transition play, obviously the threat from set pieces. I thought the, the havertz trossard combination in the first half was really interesting, you know, almost at pl times playing like that old-fashioned front two. Um, in the second half, I loved the impact from Ranieri. He came on and immediately kind of took responsibility, took a shot on from range. The Arsenal bench were up on their feet. They loved that from him. Um, and we got there in the end. We got there in the end, and that is all that matters. But, oh man, we can't have a whole season like this. Please, 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 please. Two big games next week, PSG and... Uh, is that De Rocher? There he is. <laughs> Uh, two big games this week PSG and then Southampton at home hopefully hopefully we don't need late late winners like this one um, oh man I need to lie down alright guys bye bye